Suzuki. The other end of the spectrum when it comes to Tata Motors is of course JLR and uh, the very latest offering is one that we have for you next. It is the XE from Jaguar. It's a make or break product because it takes on the 3 Series. But is it good enough? Bala drove the car in Spain. Here's the review. It's getting a lot of attention and why not? It had a spectacular debut in London just a few days ago and now the XE is here for the world to see. So we all know by now how crucially important the XE model is for Jaguar. With the numerous teaser campaigns, the Big Bang unveiled on the banks of the Thames River and the number of appearances it's already done at global motor shows. But the crucial question on everyone's minds is the driving dynamics of the XE. So let's not waste any more time. Let me just stop talking and start driving this baby jack. Yes, Jaguar's make or break XC model has promised a lot in its build up with the new aluminium architecture, aerodynamic design, and the JLR's first in house engine range. But basically, this is Jaguar's most affordable sedan with which it hopes to show up volumes by attracting a wider and younger set of buyers. This will especially hold true in markets like the USA. The BMW 3 Series is considered the segment leader in the driving dynamic department, closely followed by the newly crowned World Car of the Year, the Mercedes-Benz C-Class that's making all sorts of benchmarks. And then there's a next-gen Audi A4 that is also about to break cover. Jaguar wants to now get back into the three-way battle after being missing for six years, when it last offered the X-Type. We're among the first to drive the XC in not-so-sunny Spain to find out if it can be a worthy competitor. There are five engines on offer across the range. We're first driving the 178BHP 2.0-litre engineer diesel and then the 237BHP 2.0-litre petrol. Jaguar is expected to first debut the petrol model in India, followed by the diesel, which will be locally assembled. Now, the first driving impression you get once you start driving the new diesel engine is how smooth and refined the engine feels. You hear a nice little growl as you start the engine, but once you hit higher speeds on the highway, the engine really settles down and gives you a really nice driving experience. And that's something Jaguar has really worked on to improve the refinement of the engine. And also the NVH levels inside the cabin are fairly impressive. But you go past 4,000 RPM, uh, you do hear some engine grumbling, but nothing too intrusive and makes for an overall very pleasant driving experience. There is a generous 430 newton meter of torque on this Ingenium diesel and there isn't a surge of power but a more controlled and linear delivery. The 2-litre petrol XC2 is refined and much more agile to drive as it does pack a punch. We only drove cars with the 8-speed ZF Auto transmission which makes for an engaging drive. It's quick and precise even on the downshift. And it's this automatic gearbox that will make it to India next year and not the six-speed manual transmission that's on offer to other markets. Jaguar has been quite vocal about the XC having all the characteristics of being a driver's car, especially with a new lightweight aluminium chassis that's as stiff as it can get. And with a high-end double wishbone front suspension, with an integral link rear suspension, the car feels quite balanced. Buyers have to choose one of the three suspension setups from passive comfort or sport and also at an additional cost an adaptive suspension which adjusts the ride depending on the terrain. India will likely get the XC with passive comfort suspension setup better suited to our roads. 
It is rather strange that this has to be a pre-purchase and not one drivers can make on the fly like the rivals have. The new electric power steering offers an impressive feel and great feedback which does lift the driving dynamics of the XC. So it's time to stir things up just a bit more with the top of the line XC. This has got the V6 engine with 340 horsepower and it's the new 4 litre engine that we're going to test out on the track. We earlier talked about the excellent handling on the roads and it's going to be interesting how it performs on the track. So let's go have some fun. coincidence that Jaguar did bring us here to the Navara circuit in northern Spain to drive the F-Type convertible as well. With similar engines to that monster, the XC didn't disappoint and behaved quite admirably on the track. The impressive handling we saw on regular roads earlier only gets better on the track. The car has ample torque and is available right when you want it. The good news? This top-of-the-line XC S Petrol is likely to be the first variant of the block in India when the XC makes its Desi debut. On pure driving dynamics, the Jaguar XC excels but falls slightly short of the BMW 3 Series. Now earlier we talked about how the XC has all the characteristics of being a driver's car. But back home in India, you will find a lot of buyers sitting here in the rear seat. Of course, the ride quality continues to be good right in the back seat as well. You've got nice, big, comfortable seats as well. But as far as space goes, that's something that's just about sufficient here, uh, especially with the headroom, uh, with the sloping roof line not being much. And that could be a problem area for some buyers back home in India, at least the ones who have chauffeurs to drive a car like this. Space or lack of much of it might be the chink in the armour of the XC, but Jaguar hopes to soon offer a long wheelbase version of the XC, especially for markets like China and India. You also have the rear seats folding in the 40 is to 20 is to 40 ratio, which can extend cargo space to a maximum of 830 litres. The cabin does feel premium with some good quality materials around the dashboard quite neatly laid out. We checked out the new 8-inch touchscreen for the new in-control infotainment with a user-friendly and simple interface. But a couple of areas that did bother us. First, the AC vents near the door that protruded a bit too much that you can hit as you get inside the car. Next, the position of the four power window switches on the driver's side door is a bit far to reach and not all drivers will find this comfy. Bottom line? On interior trim, the Mercedes-Benz C-Class is still the one that scores over the pack, including the XC with its otherwise rich and plush interior feel. It almost feels strange to talk about the styling on a Jaguar sedan at the end of the review, but that's largely because we have already taken you through so much on how this car looks and why. Needless to say, it's simply gorgeous and we love the agile and taut feel of the design. The XC is expected to arrive early next year after a likely Big Bang unveil at the Delhi Auto Expo in February. Jaguar is exploring the option of introducing the XC as a CKD rather than a CBU to give it more flexibility in pricing, especially the diesel variant. The BMW 3 Series is currently priced between 36 lakhs and 45 lakh rupees, while the Mercedes C-Class goes for 40 to 43 lakh rupees ex-showroom Delhi.